Kung gusto niya investigation, sasagot ka pa doon. Kaya ayos niya siya, baka agahan mo yan. Sorry okay. for that, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, kasi naman, like, klaro naman, di ba? I've not talked about anything personal. No. Let's not use this hearing of Jesus na non-stop. And obviously, di ba, monopolistic siya. Which is violative so many things. Sino pa ba ang next natin makikita ang manloloko? Sabi nga ni Attorney Mark, walang forever. Dahil po yun sa meron mga manloloko. At kung loloko kayin ka, di ba, dapat hindi ka nagsistay sa isang toxic situation. So ito na mukhang may panloloko at naloloko tayo, kaya nga may house rules. At ba diba? at mukhang lumalabas pa konti-konti at nagdadag sila sa pagsasagot ng mga tanong pag hindi nila masagot, Mr. Chair. At on the resolution as amended that we adopted last uh, hearing, no which is to simply naman urge the NTC uh, to suspend the operations of SUARA. So based on its violations of their franchise, may I just uh, be allowed to ask some clarificatory questions? Yes, please. So this is to... Um, Uh, please take note, uh, Attorney Tolentino, there are clarifiatory questions to be asked by the Honorable uh, Mig Sugrades. So in our previous hearings, we already established that Suarez Sog is actually a monopoly. Nakita naman po natin sa pie chart na nilabas po uh, of the Kingdom of Jesus. And um, as well with any of the lawyers, uh, it's part of your due diligence to know the membership of the major stockholder of your corporation, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. May I know how many members uh, the Kingdom of Jesus um, has today? The, the Kingdom of... I am... I, no? I cannot answer that, Mr. Chair. I am the lawyer of SMNI, not the executive pastor. You just mentioned earlier, you, it's part of your due diligence, diba? Sanabi mo, may due diligence as every lawyer to I'll know the to answer, Mr. Chair, to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Chair. But to be honest, Mr. Chair, I have no personal knowledge to the number of members. But I know... It's about more than millions, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, I did my due diligence. So, meron naman po kami kayong website. Pakita po na lang natin yung screenshot ng website. Okay. May we have the screenshot? So, it says in the screenshot of the website where Pastor Kibolo is there, no? You have 7 million worldwide, no? And congregations in Asia, North America, South and Central America, Europe, Africa, and Australia. Um, so, ang laki, 7 million followers worldwide, members worldwide, and uh, um, I, sobrang laki niyan. On what occasions, Mr. Chair, do uh, these members get together? Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, I am not a member of the church, so I have no personal knowledge. I am just a lawyer of SMNI, Mr. Chair. I am not the lawyer of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, but I admit, Mr. Chair, that Pastor Apollo Sikibolo is my friend, Mr. Chair. Okay, since uh, dinidiin naman, hindi niya sinasagot po. Okay, um, so since dinidiin naman po yung corporation, so well, uh, gusto niya tayong turuan. No? In 2006, when you converted from a non-stock corporation to a corporation soul, how many members would you have back then? How many members did you have back then? As a corporation soul, Mr. Chairman, from the word soul, there's only one person involved, Mr. Chair, holding the properties of the corporation as a trustee Per section 108 of the... Mr. Chair, I'm asking code. about the members. No, we will have to understand. Uh, this is one person representing... A, se a religious sector. A religious sector. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ilan, ilan yun? That's why, Mr. Chair, I have no personal knowledge with respect to the numbers, but I can give estimate, Mr. Chair, Which more is... than millions, Mr. Chair. Okay, more than Seven million, million, more or less, but it includes also the sympathizers, Mr. Chair, worldwide, Mr. Chair. Okay, that's in 2006, correct? <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so let's just say... What's what's two thirds of seven million, Mr. Chair? Seven million, two thirds. Yes. That's around four million. Uh, around four million. Okay. Yes. Um, and when the, you amended your AOI from a non-stock to a corporation soul, were you able to convene these four million members from all around the world? Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to manifest that there was no amendment from <clears throat> from stock to corporation soul, Mr. Chair. Okay. Per record, Mr. Chair. Okay. Can we show na lang po the GIS that you, you in your certificate of filing of amendment of articles of incorporation, did not, didn't you change from a, from your non-stock to a, a, to a corporation soul? 
na paulit-ulit yung binibigyan ng uh, di ba nilalabas corporation soul corporation soul ngayon are you recanting what is the good lord recanting now that he is there's there's no corporation soul there's no amendment parang nililito po tayo mr chair so i just can can we attorney i think that's a uh, misdeclaration your statement earlier with this document so based on my personal knowledge mr chair We're not no, no, asking, no, no, this no, is a document that you submitted documents already i mean you know uh, alam po ninyo pag sinabi yung at tingnan nyo na yung dokumento para maging tugma. Anyway, so, kita naman po natin may dokumento na they submitted, no? Um, so, again, two-thirds of the membership, you have seven million on an estimate, is four million. And now you're saying you don't know how they convened or whatsoever. Walang pictures of this milestone to have four million. It's such a big diba, event all over the world. May know the question, Mr. Chair. The do you question, have any proof? Do you have that, any proof that you've you know the membership? That is, all, that is an estimate, Mr. Chair. No, no, we it, the, no. We're talking. We're talking of any proof that uh, they convened. Yes, because have, as stated here in your certificate of filing of amended articles of incorporation, which you submitted to the SEC and you submitted to Congress as part of your repertorial requirements on November eight, you got the vote of at least two thirds of the members of the corporation, right? Mr. Chair, yes. And uh, this is to 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 uh, amend to to make uh, I am the, it a corporation. So, uh, attorney, I only answer that, Mr. Chair, that I'm not the lawyer of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. I am the lawyer of SMNI, Mr. Chair. I can have no personal knowledge about the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, Mr. Chair. But I have a question. Don't you think you should have wor uh, some working knowledge about this, since this you're representing SMNI, of which uh, the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the sole corporation, is part of? Or majority of. I mean, how can you detach yourself from that argument, di ba? Na dapat hindi ko kayo pwede magtaguro na eh. Kasi may due diligence yan. As a lawyer, you come here, you're supposed to come here prepared and have the answers. And you can't waste the time of all the resource persons and including the members of Congress. Sorry for that, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's why, you know, if you keep on saying that you are not, I mean, you should, boss, third hearing na po natin to, you should be prepared to answer these questions already. Tapos, there's another lawyer that comes in just to deliver a letter. So, I mean, I, I don't understand. Uh, you have to be able to answer these questions. The question of the Honorable Lograres is, do you have any photo to show that the executive of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the sole corporation, convened? Because as per the amended articles, you did convene. Attorney Rolex, why kayo may sagot? Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, sir. We have discussed this. When it when questions would touch on the on the executive pastor of the kingdom of jesus christ the name above every name inc yes we only have the certificate of filing of amended articles for 2023 20, and the other one the previous one 20 mr chair since they 20, are uh, Yes, yes, you still have the floor. Go ahead. Your, your Honor. We so are, are you able to answer the question? We are order. engaged only by SMNI, Your Honor. And later on, during but, the second hearing, uh, we agreed to be lawyers for uh, Ms. Badoy and Mr. Celis, but not for the executive pastor. Your it, this yes, but you know, these are already amendments to the incorporation, the corporation that controls the SMNI. Now, hindi po dapat, alam niyo, asagot ito? Your Honor, how, can, how, how, how can you... How can you say that you don't have working knowledge and come here and we talk about this? How can how can there be an intelligent discussion with our resource persons? Mr. And Chair, how can you defend SMNI? Your Honor, do you not know a basic question as far as this particular sole corporation? Would you respect your Honor? We are called here to answer for uh, one, the alleged 1.8 billion uh, travel expenses expenditures of the speaker. Number two, the uh, uh, red tagging uh, allegedly made in a program in SMNI. Well, Mr. very Chair, good. Mr. Chair, but I, I don't have any knowledge on what happened in 2006 but when the vote was taken. Would you respect your honor? Mr. Chair, please. Attorney, ito na po yan. Uh, you also yes, called honor. here to defend SMNI. And in SMNI, there is a sole corporation of this nature. That's why we're just asking you, you cannot escape from the fact that this has to be part of your job to be able to justify their very existence. You cannot say that what ni po ko abogado niyan. Then, pwede niyo sabihin, lahat siya hindi ako abogado except SMI. Ang problema, marami hong tao at maraming korporasyon nagkocontrol ko doon sa SMI. Eh. 
So, kailangan, hindi po dapat. I mean, if you are reversal, kayo po na ko po rito at ako po dyan, at ako po yung abogado, hindi ba dapat? Alam po rin yan. Definitely, the view there is better than the view here, Your Honor. Thank you very much. At least, we're clear, clear Tony Rolex. Mr. But you know, I once, I once sat over there for nine years. I know, and I used to watch you. And I knew you will ask questions like this too. Okay? <laughs> at yung pinaparusot yung mga, yung mga resource persons pag hindi tama yung sagot. The Honorable Nograres. Mr. Chair, claro ko lang Thank po. Thank you, Your Honor. No, um, sanabi po kasi ni Attorney Suplico na they're being called here for, you know, the, this, ano, yung mga red tagging. Oh. Sa agenda A. Sa agenda B tayo, we're talking about the resolution here. Yes. To clarify lang po. And which you are still also the lawyers for you know, SMNI on this resolution, which is simply to urge NTC to suspend because of violations of your franchise. Correct, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. So, iklaro po na, let's not mislead right now what's happening. Hindi naman po ako yung nag-file nun. Pinag-uusapan natin ang resolution na final ko to urge NTC to suspend if we find that violations. Okay. And in any case, since they did not do their due diligence as lawyers, um, there is section 114 of the Revised Corporation Code. And nandito naman din yung SEC na I can ask them questions if you cannot answer the questions of a major stockholder. SEC. Yes, yes, yes. oh, so, um, are you addressing this now? Um, Wait, Attorney Tolentino. I am. Pwede bang... Taposin po natin si Congressman Nogdares. Hindi po kayo pwede pumasok. Okay. Po you, until, you know, know. kanina nagsasalta, puro hindi nyo alam. Ngayon naman na bibigyan niya, ibabanda niyo sa iba, tatanungin nyo at papasok ulit kayo. Pwede bang taposin muna ni Congressman Nogdares? Congressman Nogdares, yung line of question po Sorry for that. Bago ko kayo pagbigyan, ha? So, yes, Honorable Nogdares, para po maging orderly yung proceeding at saka maintindihan po natin yung issues. Honorable Nogdares. So, Section 114 of the Revised Corporation Code, which embodies the rules for corporation soul since gusto naman po nila tayong turuan tungkol sa corporation soul, explicitly requires that at least two-thirds of the membership will give its written consent or has voted to incorporate at a duly convened meeting of the body. SEC, tama po ba, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, SEC, please answer the question. That is correct, Mr. Chair. And even um, jurisprudence, Iglesia Evangelista versus Bishop Lazaro, GR number 184088, July 6, dated July 6, 2010, states, even an amendment as well requires two-thirds of its membership, the vote or the written consent of its membership that convenes for that sole purpose. SEC. Correct? That, that's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Dito po, makikita natin sa pag-file pa lang nila ng Certificate of Amendment of Articles. That's why I highlighted it. It says two-thirds of the members of the corporation, which is not membership and violative of Section 114. Is this correct, uh, as, uh, Mr. Chair, to SEC? That appears to be the case, Mr. Chair. Yes. But, but of course, alam naman po natin, mandatory, I mean, may, may mga submissions in ang documents and you have to, SEC has to, um, uh, if nagbigay sila ng documents, kailangan naman pong, uh, di ba, uh, i-approve. Yes. Right? So, can we show na lang the next slide? Next slide, please. So, they have a trustee certificate which is notarized. No? Sworn. There's an oath there. Sabi naman po nila, contradictory to the first page of the submission. This is attached to the um, 2006 amendment. Meron naman silang two-thirds of the members in a special meeting called for that purpose and jointly held on November 8, 2006. Um, so I, I've been looking through the website. Wala mo po kasing pictures, walang anything. So if SMNI na lang po can furnish us a copy of a photo or proof of the notice, kasi 2006, wala pang, hindi pa pwede yung mga Zoom-Zoom pang ano, board meetings. So dapat, di ba, nakita yan na magkasama-sama sila to, on November 8, specifically, especially for that that they called the meeting. I'm really hoping SMNI would be able to uh, submit such documents or proof. Because if not, um, hindi po ba to SEC? This, kasi akong nabasang administrative case uh, number 03-15-173 um, on Nature's Garden Park versus Enforcement and Investor Protection De Department where you defined fraud within the purview of SEC to be uh, fraud as actual or constructive. And in the same case, you mentioned that any material statement made by an incorporator in its articles of incorporation or amendment that turns out to be falsehood 
um, would be considered fraudulent. And again, yung, yung fraudulent na to, regardless of the incorporator's intent or knowledge of such, such falsehood, correct? Mr. Chair. Yes, that's, that's correct, Mr. Chair. Correct, Mr. Essentially, pag mag good faith na naman na argument, no, that they, they didn't know, they didn't comply, it's still going to fall as fraud within the definition of SEC. Correct? SEC. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Thank and you. fraud in submission na, even if they say good faith, is a ground to cancel such amendment or certificate of registration. Correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Ano mong Okay. Proceed. Um, may I ask, and um, with this uh, cancellation, no? uh, may I ask lang, um, NPC naman po, Mr. Chair. Please proceed. Um, for NTC, it is within the power of the NTC to issue certificates of public convenience for operation of communications of radio and television broadcasting system, correct? Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. And corollary to this power and to your regulatory powers, does NTC also have the power to suspend such certificate, license, or permits? Proceed. If the violations are directly in not uh, are directly in violation of the CPC that the NTC issued, then the NTC may consider may consider your honor. But we take into account also the other jurisprudences on, on, on in light of this. Thank so, you. So uh, essentially, Mr. Chair, I just want we just want to clarify from NTC if we see violations now that we're seeing several violations within especially the franchise as far as so. And even if we dig deeper and see more violations, uh, does, does NTC have the power to suspend while we're looking into violations? At magkakarampotukan po na lalabas po ang violations? Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Honor, we will, uh, we will be uh, evaluating very carefully the, the, the resolutions and whatever that the, this committee may, may come up with. To, and we take into account also the existing mandate that we have and the corresponding jurisprudence. Yes, Mr. simply Chair. that's why our resolution is to urge NTC. No, so to enlighten lang everyone, I suppose let's run through na lang po the violations. First, de ba yung ground naman po ng pag-urge natin sa NTC dahil may violations sa franchise. Um, klaro naman po kanina pa that we have next next slide please. On their franchise, which is RA one one four two two, section four uh, must violated, not to use the uh, station or facilities for dissemination or of deliberately false information or willful misrepresentation to the detriment of the public interest. Okay, next slide. Last meeting, of course, we established this with this whole con shift of the controlling interest. No. Um, and again, this would hit another provision in their franchise, which is on the next slide, Section 10, which we have established that there is no prior approval on the transfer of the controlling interest. And then that's the first sentence of Section 10. The next slide, please. There's also a violation on the requirement to report within uh, 60 days from the transfer of the controlling interest. Um, so, punta tayo sa mukhang ngayon dahil sa nakita natin no, that the latest GIS statement that they submitted uh, to us is different. Is different. Uh, the one, 2021 po ba yun? 2021 GIS submitted to us on the reportorial requirement is different from the one that they submitted to um, SEC. Mukhang ngayon may violation na rin po sa Section 12. Um, which, if I may direct this committee lang to Section 12 on the repertorial requirements. Um, one, two. On the third paragraph, actually, the second paragraph, the annual report shall include an update on the rollout, development, operation, or expansion of business, audited financial statements, latest general information sheet officially submitted to SEC. So, bakit po iba ang sinabit sa atin at iba ang official sinabit po nila sa SEC? 
certification of the NTC on the status of its permits and operations and an update on the dispersal of ownership undertaking if applicable. The next, the next paragraph, the repertorial compliance certificate issued by Congress shall be required before an application for permit, certificate, or any equivalent thereof is accepted by the NTC. So ngayon mukhang pumasok na meron na rin pong violation ng Section 12. Hindi pa po tayo tapos. Um, like we showed earlier, ay, last hearing, next slide please, lalabas ko po ulit na lang yung pie chart. Um, that essentially, so 53.46% is the executive pastor, FIBOS Holdings is 46.22, eh, FIBOS Holdings naman, about 97% is owned by executive pastor na, di ba, noong 2022 naman, na-established natin na si pastor po ang talagang may control naman. So, equivalently, may 98.37% na share talaga si executive pastor. So, at makikita po natin na ang um, cooperative na wala rin po doon sa kanilang franchise na ginawa nila to comply after 29 years of existence ay 0.19 lang po. Ang layo-layo ng 30% um, requirement nila to offer the public um sa dispersal of ownership clause nila. And they only did this two years ago, after 29 years of existence, Mr. Chair. Diba, sinabi po naman, Mr. Chair, nila, that they were they are complying and may good faith na naman. Pero questionable na gusto pala nila comply eh, two years ago lang nila kinomply after 29 years of existence. Medyo, di ba, nakaka, ano, Mr. Chair, nakakapagduda. Di ba? But even with that, we'll show the next slide. So, dahil hindi umabot sa 30%, meron violation on Section 11. Okay. More than even the franchise, nakikita natin tuloy-tuloy yung mga violations nila. Even with the Constitution. Next slide, please. Because we've established that there's monopoly um, on Article 12. Section 19, the state shall regulate or prohibit monopolies when public interest so requires. No combinations in restraint of trade, of trade or unfair competition shall be allowed. Next slide. Hindi lang isa na violation and the highest law of the land, which is the Constitution. Pati rin po ang Section, 16, uh, section 11, Article 16, that Congress shall regulate or prohibit monopolies in commercial mass media. Na uh, Mukhang tinatamaan na rin po na... Kailangan natin din tingnan to. Kaya nga, di ba, nakikita natin may mga violations. Not even with the Constitution. Let's also go to the KBP Broadcast Code, which they only withdrew their membership on December 4, 2023. So they cannot now wash their hands and say that all other violations uh, that they did prior to that does not ap apply to them. So next slide. Article 1 of the KBP Broadcast Code on Section 3, Fairness and Objectivity. News report shall be fair, factual, and objective. Okay, next slide. Meron then on Section 4 on news sources. The only news that can be attributed to a source shall be aired. News must be uh, clearly identified. You know, these there are violations here. Na, naklaro naman, di ba, na Mr. Chair, correct, um, na... Umami naman po na may mga violations at hindi nag-comply at hindi na-verify. Tama po, Mr. Chair. Not just Section 4. The next slide. Meron pa pong personal attacks na bawal po na nalabas po naman nila Honorable Manuel and Honorable uh, Castro kanina po. Next slide. Meron din Article 5 naman kung sinasabi nila nagkakamali. Uh, when a mistake has been broadcast, um, it must be acknowledged and rectified as soon as possible. At ngayon lang sila nag- sasabi ng sorry dahil iniimbestiga nag-iimbestiga po tayo parang bakit ganun po de ba Meron din Article 13 ng KBP Broadcast Code So persons who regularly go on air shall be required to obtain accreditation Okay some of the uh, SMNI hosts were not KBP accredited Correct Mr. Chair Ah, uh, ako nga po, hindi nga po ako KBP accredited. Sinasabi na dati po kong co kaya, kaya nga po umalis. Kasi mukhang may mga violations tayong nakita. So, I can attest to that veracity na some hosts really are not accredited. Okay. And then we have another article sa KBP Broadcast Code, Article 33. The Universal Ethical Standards. Ang dami po kaya sa KBP Broadcast Code. Hindi lang po yun. 
Ah, uh, Mr. Chair, meron din po sa sarili nating house rules. Para maklaro lang kung bakit, 'di ba, na side court contempt. Pakita po natin ang next slide. For sure naman when the Honorable Pimentel and the Honorable Abante moved for uh, to cite Uh, the two individuals for contempt. Siyempre, mabigat yun sa loob. Pero, trabaho din po natin na kailangan to maintain the integrity of um, this Honorable Committee of Congress ay uh, pag may lumalabag sa batas at may lumalabag sa house rules natin, it is our duty to move for those para hindi tayo niloloko. Ayun eh, naman po din gusto natin, hindi tayo maloko po, di ba? And, So, to emphasize that there are violations naman po talaga, which we cited, which the Honorable Congressman cited, which is Section 11C on refusal to answer any relevant inquiry, which today we also heard nga, yun naman, di ba? Yung dahilan kung bakit uh, na-cite in contempt. So, and also, acting in a disrespectful manner towards any member of the committee or any misbehavior in the presence of the committee. And then, Next slide. Today, now we see maybe there's a violation na rin with SEC that SEC might should start looking into. Because merong hindi pagtutugma-tugma ang kanilang pagbibigay ng dokumento sa pag-apply ng kanilang amendment that would be detrimental now to their pinangahawa kanilang corporation so sila. Eh, kung mawalan sila ng certificate niyan, yung amendment to begin with, wala pala. Balik sila sa non-stock. So, mawawala yung argument nila. So, kailangan po ata talagang Tingnan nila yan. And tingnan po rin ng SEC. Hindi lang po yung NTC na. No? And to, again, uh, the next slide, babalik ko, na may violation din sa revised corporation code. So, in the event then that there is, that they find fraud in the amendment of AOI, of, of uh, the Kingdom of Jesus, the Executive Kingdom of Jesus, no? Let's go back to the pie chart. Ano mangyayari? ba diba? Pareho pa rin yung numero. Kasi, Kung magiging non-stock sila, babalik sila sa Kingdom of Jesus na hindi corporation soul at mas malala kasi non-stock sila, 98.37% pa rin. Kasi essentially the 53.46 and the 44.91 ay magiging Kingdom of Jesus na non-stock. And obviously, di ba, monopolistic siya, which is violative so many things. So ngayon, with... Uh, Meron pa din po, next, na mukhang even the first hearing, we have established that meron ad pending administrative case filed against SMNI for red tagging and misusing uh, of their platform. Um, tama po, uh, Mr. Chair sa NTC? Uh, There's a pending. Please um, reply to the inquiry of the Honorable. Atin na. Ang niloloko-loko tayo dito. It's summary lang para pakita po natin sa taong bayan ang mga violations that we have seen so far. Not just their franchise on Section 4, Section 10, Section 11, mukhang ngayon pati Section 12. Pati ang highest law of the land, ang constitution natin, dalawang articles. Article 12 and Article 16. Even the KBP broadcast code, there are there's Article 1, Article 4, Article 5, Article 9, Article 30, Article 33. Sarili nating house rules din. Kasi hindi nila sinasabi yung totoo. Meron tayong section 11C and 11E sa house rules natin. At mukhang ngayon, kahit po sa revised corporation code, mukhang ganun. So, we're simply really urging NTC na mukhang nagkakalokohan dito kasi may mga fraudulent aspects dito. Um... Sino pa ba ang next natin makikita ang manloloko? Sabi nga ni Attorney Mark, walang forever. Dahil po yun sa meron mga manloloko. At kung loloko kayin ka, di ba, dapat hindi ka nagsistay sa isang toxic situation. So ito na mukhang may panloloko at naloloko tayo, kaya nga may house rules. At di ba, at mukhang lumalabas pa konti-konti at nagdadag sila sa pagsasagot ng mga tanong pag hindi nila masagot, Mr. Chair. Ang nakakatakot ay sino pa ba ang lolokohin kasi nila? Papayag po ba tayo na mandato natin to protect the people from misinformation, to protect people from people who are violating the laws? Papayag po ba tayo? Sana yung NTC, tingnan nyo yung mabuti to, na habang tinitingnan at inuungkat, Lahat ng mga violations, not just the franchise na makita nyo naman, 
paunti-unting may nakikita tayong mga violations. Sana po ay suspindihin nyo muna habang tinitingnan natin lahat po ng mga violations na nangyayari. Yun ang naman po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, can I comment to that, Mr. Chair? There's no question, though, Mr. Chair. But... Wala po siyang uh, hinihinging uh, sagot sa kanyang sinabi. Attorney. But can I make a simple manifestation about uh, hindi about forever or not forever? It's about okay. the law. I'll give you one minute. Go ahead. It's about corporation soul, Mr. Chair. It's different from religious societies. Under the revised corporation code, corporation code is sec corporation soul is under section 108, 109 up to 113, Mr. Chair. Religious societies is article uh, section 114 of the revised uh, corporation code. Maybe the beautiful congresswoman. Wag kang bumawi uh, bawi ngayon pagkatapos mo magpost ng mga kung ano ano tungkol sa akin na tawagin ako beautiful. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, just one, one the two, one to the Latino to have a proper decorum. You should address the chair, and you should that point out somebody members of this committee in your manifestation or else. Mr. I'm still a question with you after this. When it comes to investigation, mamaya, yung resolution ng investigation, sasagot ka pa doon. Kaya ayos yung sasagot mo, baka agahan mo yan. Sorry for that, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, kasi naman, like, klaro naman, di ba? I've not talked about anything personal. No. Let's not use this hearing to hit on personal. Sige, you can post on your page personal things, but let's not talk about this here because I'm not talking about it here naman. Um, and just to rebut na lang po, SEC, that's why I uh, said the case of the Iglesia Evangelista versus uh, Bishop Lazaro. Because that's a case that talked about corporation soul and its amendment and applicable nga ang pagpa-file. Uh, applicable din sa kanila ang corporation soul, ang 114 on religious societies of the two-thirds vote of membership. Correct po, Mr. Chair? Correct, Mr. Chair. So, he cannot say, again, a religious society nakasulat sa Section 114 because I did my due diligence and I studied and came prepared to court today, to court, to the hearing today. <laughs> uh, that there is an existing jurisprudence that explicitly already refers that Section 114 on the two-thirds vote of the membership is applicable to amendments of corporations to amend it to become a corporation sold.